we want just to start the first talk for today, which is held by Felix about lead. What, what happens the la what happened the last year? What comes next? So if you wanna hear this talk, join us here. We have plenty of seats left. There's room for everybody. <laughs> Come join us, hear this talk, and let's give a warm applause Felix. Thank you. So, um, it The lead project, we actually announced it on the last battle mesh, and it was kind of our reboot of the community of OpenWRT, or that's what we intended it to be. Um, so I would like to start by giving you a bit of a background of how this came to be and why we did what we did. So it basically started by, uh, it, it was started by let's say, three people initially who had the idea of, of uh, doing some major changes to the OpenWRT project because we were really dissatisfied for a long time with the state of the project and with lack of progress that we had on many fronts with the fact that we weren't really uh, as transparent as we wanted to be and that we had kind of dysfunctional maintainership roles and people that were responsible for various pieces of the code or the server infrastructure, and it wasn't really working out, but we had no process of getting more people involved and getting things fixed. So in a way, the project was stagnating for a number of years now, and we decided to do something about this. <clears throat> we, didn't, we didn't really know back then what the real fix would look like or what we actually needed to do to fix the project. We just knew that we couldn't really do this well from within the project because there was, we had endless discussions in the past and, and think, lots of people having different ideas, but in the end, nobody actually getting around to implementing those ideas. So things were stagnating over and over again. And we decided that if we want to really fix things, we have to do some major changes and we have to be able to actually try out what we want to do and see what works in practice practice as opposed to just sticking with one theory of how we could fix everything and then just going for that and maybe realizing halfway along the way that it, it doesn't really work out as well as we had anticipated it would be. So we decided we needed a sandbox to, to play with, to toy with new ideas, figure things out as we move along and just see where it takes us. And that's really what we set up the lead project to be. Um, and as such, we announced it uh, on the last battle mesh as a reboot of the OpenWRT community, intentionally not as a fork, though things turned out quite differently in practice. And I want to go into like, what, what happened there with that announcement or with the, with, the, with the time that led up to it. So early last year, uh, we had gotten the idea into our head to, to create this sandbox, to start the new project. And uh, we didn't an announce anything to the project or uh, to, to the public yet at that point um, because we wanted to make sure that when we launched this, there will not be a huge amount of, of people suddenly stopping us on, on the first stages of actually trying to figure things out. So we set it up in secret. We, we played with new build infrastructure. We played with... Uh, uh, with moving the repository to Git only. We played with various changes to, to the code base. And then, well, after, uh, after playing with the idea for a bit, I had a big vacation coming up that I had planned a long time ahead of time. Um, and just before the battle mesh, I was actually 
over one and a half months away from all this computer stuff. I was basically following email discussion regarding the new project that we created. Um, and when I came back from Asia, I actually flew there directly to the battle mesh, uh, talked with the other people where that, that I was planning the, the lead project with. Uh, and then at some point they went like, okay, we've done all the preparation work and Battle Mesh is the right opportunity to start announcing it to the public. So um, let's announce it now. Okay, you just, you just came back, you're there on the event. Uh, go sit together with Joe on stage and announce this thing. And I was like, oh yeah, I haven't really spent much time on the computer recently, just followed the email dis discussion. Yeah, let's, let's totally go for that. Let's announce it to the public now. And then we went on stage and we talked about what we did, how we relaunch, were we going to relaunch the OpenWRT community. And at some point, somebody hit me with the question, so if we actually discussed this with the OpenWRT developer and uh, with the OpenWRT developers, and we were like, oh shit, that's something that we totally forgot. Maybe we should have taken care of that before. Um, but now, well, we're live streaming, we're public anyway, so we'll just, um, we'll tell them now and we'll send an email. And uh, that's kind of one, of one of the first stages of why it didn't really come across as well-intentioned as it was with the other guys. So it's a bit understandable um, that from the people that we left behind in the OpenWRT community that we didn't uh, like initially re recruit for the lead project, they felt a bit pissed off because of the sudden thing that just hit them right in the face, which is natural. So, of course, there was a, a public shitstorm as well, and things just, it was, a, let, let's just say, it was a nice roller coaster that was, that was going on. And it turned out that a lot of the ideas that we had with, uh, with the lead project, it was working out pretty well. So. One thing that we really wanted to change was to, to make the, the BuildBot infrastructure actually usable and to actually get reliable builds uh, on time with the resources that we have available and actually being able to work towards a release because with OpenWRT for a long time we had the issue that we had no release because every time we wanted to do a release there was lots and lots of work involved and lots of manual tweaking here and there and do, doing special configuration options for the release build and all that. And we decided that the only way to have even a, something closely resembling a predictable release schedule is by making it really, really easy to do a release. So we wanted to make sure that we build the, the release from the build bot infrastructure as well. And what we, we also did is one, one of the big issues we had in the OpenWRT project was the fact that we had these, these broken maintainership roles or people maintaining server infrastructure that didn't give out access to anybody else. So if they didn't have time to work on something, it was kind of stagnating all the time. So we fixed that by making sure um, that we don't have a bus factor of one on any particular piece of the infrastructure. We got more people involved and we learned a, a really important lesson from, from our earlier uh, change that we made where we put all the packages on GitHub, namely that we can actually trust people a lot more freely than we dared to do in the past. Many people, people might screw up things if we give them access to a particular piece of code or a particular piece of infrastructure, but if we just assume that if, if they screw up, we can just talk to them and they'll do a better job next time, we can actually trust, go pretty far in trusting new people with pieces of the infrastructure. And this is what we also did with the lead project. We, we decentralized our infrastructure a lot. We gave access to at least three people for every, every important piece of infrastructure. Um, so it doesn't, like if, if somebody just doesn't have time, which is a pretty common occurrence in open source projects, we can always manage to continue as a project. And this is something that for, for, uh, for quite a while in the lead project turned out pretty well. We got, by, by trusting people more, we got more people that actually cared about joining the project because they could actually do something without having to ask for permission every single time along the way. And we got more people, we, we grew the community, we got actually had 
a team forming that wanted to take care of the documentation, which was a long-standing ripe in the OpenLRT community. We, we developers often really don't care a lot about documentation, so we tend to not write a lot about it. And it actually takes a completely different skill set to produce decent documentation as it takes to produce decent working code. So we were really happy to see that actually some people sat together and said, okay, we want to do this, this documentation project. We want to build the new wiki and we want to structure it. Um, so how do we start? Like, what are the first steps and all that? And they were a bit surprised when we basically told them, okay, look, you, you guys get the go-ahead. You can do this. Tell us what you need and you do it the way that you want to because you're responsible, so you should make the decisions along the way. It's not useful if, if just somebody else from the project that's not involved in this particular effort just says, okay, we'll let you do this, but you have to do it this and this and this way without checking if that actually matches the reality of th how things could be done. So we got some, some pretty good responses from them. They started setting up the wiki, and at some point they decided, okay, we want to do, <clears throat> we want to do the front page as well and not just the wiki. And to do, in, when we set up the lead project, we had like a static website generator where we had a Git repository where we could push, we had a really simple way of pushing changes to the document or to, to the front page through Git and we were kind of proud of that and it worked really well. But then it turned out that they didn't like this because they were not used to uh, working through Git to update content as well. But in the end, we decided, okay, we, we don't want to maintain all the content, and even though we set up this nice system to generate the web page, if those guys that w actually want to take care of the content say they need to be able to handle the front page through a wiki engine as well, then maybe we should just give them that so that they can do the job that they, that they want to do. And I think this is also another thing that, that where we just changed the culture completely compared to the OpenWRT project, which was a bit more closed off uh, from the public where we had this, this closely knit group of people that were making all the decisions, uh, even for things where we weren't really doing the work because we had no resources to do so. And I think opening up those parts that really helped the community grow. And so I think in, in a way that was a big success of the lead project, but there was still this issue remaining that since we created this reboot that turned out to be a fork eventually, um, we still had two projects and that was kind of confusing the whole community because everybody knew OpenWRT and all all the critical developers uh, that were like involved with the community quickly learned about lead as well and started working with us so we had an active and vibrant developer community but what we didn't have was like universal name recognition among all the users and so this is the next thing that we're now working on fixing to actually do the things that we set out to do in treating the lead project as a sandbox for experimenting with new ideas and actually getting the projects merged back together and for a while, this seemed like a pretty big task because obviously the OpenWRT developers were still pretty pissed off about the way that we set out to do the, the things that we did. And uh, we, of course, didn't want to compromise on, on all the essential bits that we built with the lead project that turned out to be working pretty well. So we never want to go back to the old ways of the OpenWRT project because we know from experience that that's, that wasn't working. And so it took quite a bit of discussion and some, some very, very strong diplomatic talks here and there to figure out like what do those guys that we left behind actually want and can we find a way to get the projects back together where everybody just saves face, where it doesn't turn into this, this big fight again that where each side just blames the other people for all the bad things that, that showed up along the way. And during the last weeks, actually, we made a lot of progress in that. We, we had some occasional 
talks over over the last couple of months where we had some some groups from or some people from one side meeting some people from the other side and we were kind of discussing like okay can you live with that can you live with that and now we're actually at the point where we have a proposal that's accepted by both sides like okay this is how we're going to merge the communities back together and these are the things that we're going to use from from uh, the lead project these are the things that we're going to use from the open wrt project and we've decided that we're going back to the open wrt name but we're going to take all the infrastructure that we built with the lead project back to the open wrt project so in a sense we're replacing the project but we're we're keeping the name and we're uh, going to be open to to have everybody that was involved with the open wrt project is free to be involved with with the new newly formed project as well and in a sense it, i think the the most uh, the, the, the best case to compare it against is uh, the old egcs fork from gcc because there we had the same situation where um, GCC was kind of stagnating and then some people came along and did a fork of GCC to be able to implement their new ideas against the resistance of the people uh, that were still in, in, in the old project. And it turns out that those new ideas worked pretty well. So in the end, the new, the new project just replaced the old one and uh, people lived happily ever after. <laughs> and this is, this is really what we're trying to do with uh, the remerge of lead and open wrt now and i'm i'm, I'm i tend to be a, an optimistic person so i don't know if things will actually work out as as well as they look in my head right now but i i think we can hope for having at least on a on a project management level have the two projects merged back again over the next couple of weeks we intentionally decided that we don't want to like, put the whole agenda of the whole merge and how everything sh or what everything should look like in the end into the full proposal of how we're going to merge. Because if there are contentious point, like we have two forums now, we have two wikis now, and we have four mailing lists now. And if we decide ahead of time like how to unify every single bit of that and make it a dependency for the project merge then obviously it's going to be maybe a few years until we get anything done if we have to agree on all the bits and details ahead of time so we decided we're not going to do that we're actually going to just decide that we want to be one project again and as one project we may have a transition period where we have these two websites these these two forums these four mailing lists or whatever and we're going to just slowly, within the project, work on resolving these things and reducing the number of active forums and bug trackers and all that, and just slowly working towards, um, on the public side, also having just one project again. We've already decided that the, the lead code base is going to be the starting point for everything anyway, and we're just going to port the missing changes that were done in the OpenWRT code base over to it so people already we, we can already tell people like this is this is the code base that you're going to use and it's hopefully going to be on the open wrt github very soon but as a project we can live with the transition period of two separate kind of project identities even though we're one project already and let's see what what we get in the in the next couple of weeks but i'm fairly optimistic that we can resolve the remaining dif differences especially since the remerge proposal that we did uh, got an act from i i think all the people that really mattered in this discussion that were really involved in the split on both sides so for the remaining time of my talk, I'm hoping that you have some really good questions about what's, what's going on in the project so I can, I can tell you a bit more. Is it on? Uh, I'm the microphone runner and I will give you the microphone so that your question will be heard by the whole audience. 
Go ahead. Raise hands. You. No? In the back over there. Let's, let's meet in the middle. Hello. Um, is there a time schedule yet? Uh, how, when, when is this going to happen? I mean, the next lady rele uh, lead re uh, release is uh, like next week, or in two weeks, and after that, um, I think there will be the, it will be OpenVRT again, um, but when is there a schedule when this will happen? It's especially because there are many things that we still need to figure out, like how we're actually moving forward. We did not make any sort of time schedule because, I mean, this is all volunteer work and people's available time shifts all the time. So how could we stick to a real time plan even if we were to make one? Okay, good point. So I hope this year, but... So I'm a little bit sad that uh, we don't keep the name lead. What's your personal opinion about that? My personal opinion is, um, well, I, I proposed uh, the name lead in real, not really because I wanted it as a project name, but because there were no other good proposals and somebody had to start. So I'm not. I'm personally not very attached to it, and I don't mind if it's LEAD or OpenWRT. It's, it's just a name. What matters to me is that we have a healthy functional project. Thanks. And another thing, even, even if at some point we don't like the... Whoa. If, if we don't like the, the name OpenWRT anymore, or we want to build a or transition to a different name at some point. We can always do that from within the project later by, by having a vote on it. I don't see it happening anytime soon. I think we're going to stick with OpenWRT for the foreseeable future. Um, I, but I think in general that works out best for the people uh, outside of, of uh, our inner circle because that's just the name that they know our project by. What would you have done differently? Look, completely, I mean, what, what was the main thing that you would have maybe avoided for those that are st stuck in the same situation right now? What should they do? You mean when launching lead or? Yeah, what was the thing that was suboptimal at some point that you would advise others to not do? Well, I guess the thing that the, I would mostly have done differently was what I mentioned in the beginning with all the chaos, with not having to talk to OpenWRT developer. There were actually a few people that we could have brought in on the lead project, but we somehow forgot in all the, in all the chaos uh, that was going on there. Um, I, I guess it would be uh, getting, getting more people on board initially and giving the OpenWRT people some lead time to, to actually understand what, what we're doing is all about and kind of uh, take the steam out of the hostilities uh, a bit earlier. Um, now everything is well and good again, so the, the pissed off people are not, not so pissed off anymore and basically everything is fine. I think there's a sense that uh, people realize that rehashing the history is who did what wrong and assigning blame and all that just is not particularly useful and that uh, we now have to move forward from where we stand and the best thing we could do is just to accept that there's enough blame for all sides to go around and it just doesn't matter uh, to or it's just not helpful to go through that over and over again. and we just we just move forward with what we have. Uh, just out of curiosity, um, is there a specific core team within OpenWRT and, and LEAD? And if yes, how big is this in number of people? Not specifically what each person is doing, but 
how big is, is a core team within OpenWRT? Um, for me, it's a bit hard to say what's, who would be part of the core team or not. It's, it, it's kind of a fluid situation. Some people have more time sometimes to work on critical subsystems or overall infrastructure. Some people have some time for a few months and then disappear afterwards because they have other things going on in their life. So it's hard to say how many. I, I guess you, if you look at the commit statistics of who's doing what amount of work, you can get some sense of who matters in which subsystem. But I don't, I don't want to pick a number because it's, it would be arbitrary. So it sounds like it's changing and, and fluent migration between persons that come and go. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I would say that's normal for a volunteer-based project because we ca just cannot assume that everybody always has time. And I think it's really unhelpful and unhealthy to put pressure on people to, to have time at particular points in time when they might have just other more important things going on in their life. We just have to make sure that we can deal with whatever time people have available. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. There's a question on IRP to you, which is, would you commit to a release every six months, considering the short life cycle of the hardware? I think we're trying to go with one release per year for a while and maybe attempt to shorten it to six months. Um, we still, I mean, when we do the remerge, uh, it's going to be a big change again in the project and we just have to wait for the dust to settle and just see if we can get a normal rhythm going. Um, I don't know. We'll try to do that, but we can't guarantee anything. Um, I'm curious uh, if you can give us some overview of what are the kinds of people who are actually working on OpenWRT or is it mostly uh, people who are just spending a bit of their spare time, people who are very dedicated in their communities, you know, community wireless projects, is it mostly people who are working for companies that are contributing as part of their work or what's kind of the layout, lay of the land there? I think there's only very few people um, where it's a, it's a big part of their company work. Um, mostly, I think it's mostly people doing things in their spare time. Uh, I, I arranged my, my business so that I get, I get paid a lot for basic infrastructure work in OpenWRT and I can do it in a way where uh, the money flow doesn't decide what I'm going to work on and what I'm not going to work on. Um, but I guess it's, it's different for everybody. There are some people uh, that get paid to take a look at various parts of OpenWRT and, and work on those. Um, but I don't think it's a majority. Twenty minutes for hundreds of questions. Yes. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, um, as I, most of the people you know, I am working in Greece, which is still, still open WRT white spot in the in the main of it, and I am asked uh, the in the connection I do have uh, slowly with the university and uh, pupils over there, I um, they get most related now to uh, some kind of Linux system, Debian, Raspi, and these things. And the major question is. Um, what's the future about compared, OpenWRT compared with something else like, uh, well, Debian on Raspberry and whatever? And uh, the lead day, um, uh, we could or we did not cover the split up of these two sorts of OpenWRT things, and they will be very happy to uh, learn there will be now one product like to follow up. And the belief in the future is a major concern about teachers in the university because they say we had no, no contact about OMWRT, we heard about, but that's not, did not went to project. No, I, so uh, I do hope now there is uh, another project in Athens where is w, OpenWRT involved in it. It's a bit more spread. 
So it is, for my part, a very, a very special situation in Greece compared to the rest of Europe. So open WRT is still something which is not spread a lot or is a little bit spread on these. And, and these are all the question is compared to Raspai and these, you know, big, bigger players on numbers, how that will go. I don't know where it's going to go, but um, where, how widespread it is also depends on the kind of project that you're looking at. For instance, um, my main focus is not really so much all the different individual projects that are used in OpenWRT. Um, I personally care a lot more on establishing it earlier in the food chain. So I work with chipset manufacturers and I try to work with ODMs to make sure um, that all the companies that are building stuff where OpenWRT and Lead could run, uh, that they get exposed to it as early as possible and uh, they get used to it and see the advantages that it has compared to all those uh, weird proprietary hacked up uh, other stacks. And so this is, I think, in, in that area, OpenWRT already has a lot of adoption from, from, I would say, most of the major companies to some degree uh, that, are, that are in this space. Any further questions? Can't see any. So... Thank you, Felix, for your talk. Thank you.